Welcome to Retro Bassin. Hopefully everyone is having a great weekend out there in Retro Bassin land. We are in the process of doing a couple of different things here on the channel. I've got a few bigger projects in various stages of completion. As always, I have got a lot of irons in the fire and am definitely going down a few different old school rabbit holes. I'm also prepping for a upcoming trip to Florida and I've got a tackle box rigged up with some old school baits that I plan to take out and use on some of the central Florida lakes. In the meantime, we are back in the studio doing a little retro unboxing from Bass and Bud David over at the Hudro Bait Company. He uh, and I have been talking on Instagram a little bit and he said he had some old school gold to send my way. Stick around. Retro Bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40-year-old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. All right, well, we are going to get to this box real quick, but first, a, a couple of channel updates and announcements. So I did mention that I was going to be heading out to Florida. Uh, as you might have seen from the last episode, we had a pretty big trip planned out with Bass and Bud, Ted Lincoln, who's got a pretty sweet 1986 Sea Nymph. Unfortunately, about a week before I came out, Ted's boat caught on fire. It sustained a ton of damage, but luckily uh, both Ted and the boat are doing okay. And he and I have some pretty grand plans to do a little bit of Doug Hannon style bassin. So I have got a, an old school Plano tackle box. It's actually a new school Plano tackle box, but it's rigged up with some old school baits. And I'll just give you eh, a real quick look at what we got cooking here. So talking to Ted about some of the different baits that we'll be working this time of year. Uh, we have got some frogs and a bunch of the different burke baits we're talking about, uh, as well as some shallow diving crankbaits and a few of Michael Bacon's specials. And I've also got, like, again, way too many lures, too little time, unfortunately. I will fish with probably an eighth of these. Uh, we've also got some old school golden floating minnow baits. If you watched last week's episode, you know what that is all about, as well as various top waters and some other baits that, uh, I cannot wait to get on the Florida water. So if all goes well, we'll be out there fishing at old school uh, in relatively short order. In addition to that, we have restocked a lot of the retro bass and gear over at Texas Provisions, including the uh, old school retro bass and hats. Uh, we've got plenty of the shirts in stock from I think medium up to 3XL, as well as a refresh of the retro bass and slaps. So head on over to TXProvisions.com. Uh, I will drop a link below, as always, in the video description. And tell them that Retro sent you. Oh. There we go. <laughs> All right, well, let's get to the good stuff. Uh, some old school mail. Uh, as always, I got to give this thing a little rattle to see what's inside. Ooh, sounds, uh, sounds like some nice old hard baits inside. Uh, so David comes to us from Allison Park, Pennsylvania. I'm not sure if that is a suburb of Pittsburgh or uh, Philadelphia, but uh, either way, that is pretty cool. And uh, yes, David, I'll have to send you a retro bass and slap uh, as a thank you. But let's uh, see if we can open this box without uh, sending myself to the ER. <laughs> or destroying any of the gold inside, you know? All right, let's get to the good stuff. Uh, first thing is wrapped up in a paper towel and this one's got a little weight to it. <laughs> this is clearly not a bass lure. <laughs> uh, well, it might be a lunker bass lure. Look at that. <laughs> wow, this is a massive piece of wood. I have never actually caught a muskie uh, or a pike or to be honest, anything larger than a chain pickerel that has that sort of pike shape to it. But this is definitely a bait that I have heard of. I believe this is called the Reef Hog, and it is a underwater glide bait. 
basically, I think you can walk this thing like a Zara Spook, but do so uh, underneath the water surface. This thing feels like every bit of six ounces or so, probably a, a what, a 10 inch bait, uh, if not a little bit bigger, and almost in a what, nice sucker or perch pattern. It's got a line tie at the front. <laughs> you better use some heavy line for this thing. Three massive treble hooks. And I'm not sure what these two things are on the back of the bait. I don't know if those are to secure the hooks. They might be. That might be what that is, just sort of an internal hook hanger. And somehow or another, this thing is weighted. I have never thrown one of these baits, but I've thrown similar ones. Uh, I think Rapala made one at some point that was sort of an underwater walking the dog bait. And if you get a look at the bait there, you'll see it's got a very interesting cut in its mouth. And I think that is to help this thing walk side to side. <laughs> you know, I'm not sure the next time I'll be up throwing a bait like this for muskie in the great north. But I do know some folks who might let me throw this down in Florida. <laughs> Even by their standards, it would take a monster Florida strain bass to hit this thing. But all in all, a really cool bait. And that was like the first one. Ooh, I see a familiar logo. The Creek Chub Lure Company logo. Creek Chub Lures. And what do we have inside? Uh, this, is, this is a wooden lure B639DD. No idea what that means, but let's check it out. Ooh, so this is a Creek Chub Minnow. This is not a wooden lure. This is definitely a plastic lure, but it is still a goodie. Uh, that is a pretty glorious looking uh, little five inch Creek Chub Minnow in some sort of blue metallic pattern. I'll have to clean that thing up, but that's a pretty sweet looking bait. Does have the classic scooped Creek Chub metal lip on it. And that's a very interesting little lure. Look at that, the old Creek Chub Pikey. That's what that is. <laughs> you can see where it says Creek Chub Pikey right there. Comes with three nice treble hooks. That is a uh, pretty heavy bait. I thought these are floating baits, but that feels like that might be a sinker. So I don't know, I'll have to do a little research on the Pikey. But either way, that is gonna go in my minnow tackle box for sure. Nice. Ooh. Ooh. I don't know exactly what this is, but I know what genre of bait, and this is very similar to a bingo bait, uh, similar to the hump bait, but this is called the Mighty Minnow, and I'll pull out the brochure to show it to the camera, the Mighty Minnow. Let's see what it says about this bait before we show it. Uh, it's a 3 8 ounce bait. The uh, fast acting lifelike minnow uh, has extra fast swimming action on a slow retrieve. And this is from the uh, Bali Sport Shop in Gamaliel, Arkansas. Woo Not a bait that I've heard of, but that looks very similar to a hump bait actually. And I always wondered how these things work. I know they used to fish these under a pop and cork back in the day. But to me, just looking at this bait, it probably should fish a whole lot like a head and sonar or a sonic. Basically like a lipless crankbait minus those rattles. Good looking little bait. Nice white color with a yellow eye. You can see a single line tie there. Pretty thin bait uh, with a nice pair of treble hooks. Oh, that's a beaut. Very cool addition to the saltwater collection. Kind of good I've got my saltwater jacket on for this one, huh? What else do we have here? Ooh, there's a, another big one. <laughs> uh, flatfish, and I feel like that has to be the world record flatfish. I've never seen one that big. That is a monster. This says this is a flat fish molded out of tenite, model number T60, color WB. But let's just appreciate how awesome that thing looks in the package and how cool that would be to see hanging on the peg. 
Wow, that is a monster of a bait and clearly another one if I was ever up in musky land. <laughs> you could throw that. This thing is so big, it almost looks like one of those gimmick lures that used to hang in tackle shops. That is a monster bait. I don't even know what you would cast that on. I've got a feeling you probably would troll it. <laughs> but that is a uh, flat fish of a uh, different color, huh? Nice white pattern. It's got a few red spots, a few black spots, and sort of a skunk stripe on the top with a painted chin. Some super heavy duty hardware. I don't think I've ever seen a split ring that big in my life. And a pretty nice line tie. Uh, that bait looks like it has never been used. And honestly, I probably can't think of too many situations where I would be casting it, but that is cool. Uh, I am happy to add that to the display. But you never know when we might need one of these. <laughs> wow. But yeah, that probably should be hanging on a peg somewhere like that. Oh, uh, well, there we go. <laughs> Ironically enough, I've actually been looking for one of these. I mean, again, I <laughs> know what you're thinking, but I've been looking for one of these mermaid type baits. It's just, I, I love gimmick lures and uh, I don't know how much I should show on this. I don't want to be de demonetized but I've been looking for one of these gimmick lures for some time. I've never seen a mermaid bait this big. All right, well, this thing is sealed up pretty well, so I may not be ripping this open just yet. It's gonna look pretty good in the peg, but um, but here you go, I'll hold it for you. There is the bait itself. Uh, <laughs> live action. <laughs> well, it is uh, not often I'm speechless by a piece of old school gold, but I don't know what to say about the happy hooker pleaser other than I guess sometime uh, lures are meant to catch fishermen more than fish, huh? <laughs> wow, that's awesome. Well, David, thanks again for sending some pretty uh, mega size old school gold by way. I will definitely get a retro bass and slap in the mail to you ASAP. By the way, as we um, do wrap up the uh, this little mail call in retro bass and definitely go ahead, uh, hit that like button, and also drop a comment. Those likes and comments absolutely help get the word out on Retro Bassin and fight that YouTube algorithm, which is, to be honest, probably skewed a little bit more toward the new school stuff. In the meantime, if you guys are looking for some more old school content, click right here. Otherwise, I'll see you right back here, same time, same place. Until then, keep the carpet side up. And Definitely fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bass.